Hey folks, Techniverse here. You know, it's going to be about time for Cure to do another full release, and it's going to be a 4.6. So we are there today. This is going to be my review of the new features, and we are going to dive right into it and check it out. As you've noticed, between now and the last video, a few things may have changed around me, but should be basically the same setup. We will dive right in, take a look at the new features, and investigate them one by one. And as always, I will encourage you to check out my Kira 5 minute or less settings playlist, which will be available at the end of this video. I will throw a card up for it, as well as a link in the description down below. On that playlist, which I'm adding to regularly, you will find a individual 5 minute or less video for each setting in Kira, describing what it is, what it interacts with, and how to use it. That being said, let's jump right into today's video, the full release of version 4.6. Uh, Alright, so here we are, Kira 4.6. What is new? Basically they have that thank you in there, there is their uh, invitation to join them in helping fight COVID-19 with 3D printing. Feel free to pop over to that website. If you need to find it, it is located in the help and what's new section. Um, there are a couple of things in here to note. We are going to glaze over some of it, such as the new intent profiles. Those are only for Ultimaker machines, although they do now include materials such as PC, nylon, CPE, and CPE+. So if you have an Ultimaker, that's a great addition, but I do not. So we are just going to kind of skip that. Um, the next thing is show active post-processing scripts. And I can give you a demonstration of this. We'll open this back up in a minute. Basically, if you go to extensions, post-processing, and then add a couple of scripts, Let's take these two out and then add a couple back in. Now you're not going to see anything right away because I don't have a model in here. So let's go ahead and open up a model real quick. And once I'm presented with the opportunity to slice, you will notice this beautiful little notch down here. Now this is the tooltip icon that tells you that you have these post-processing scripts added. And now when you highlight it, thanks to this addition, it tells you how many you have added in what order and it tells you which ones are active. So it says the following scripts are active, display filament and layer on LCD and pause at height. So that is a great addition for those of you who use a lot of post-processing scripts to know what is happening on the fly. Also to get that little red bump right there, lets me know before I go to slice another model that I still have these on and I need to turn them off. And you can actually access it just by clicking on the button there. So I will remove these two so I don't accidentally use them when I don't need them. And let's go back and look and see what else they have in here. All right, so a couple quick things to just look over real quick. Uh, hole horizontal expansion, a new setting that applies an offset to all holes on each layer allowing you to manually enlarge or contract holes to compensate for horizontal expansion. Uh, this is going to be very useful and something that I plan to play around with a lot in the future and we will be dedicating a whole video just to this so stay tuned for that. The next is the infill only checkbox in the per model settings has been changed to a drop down so you can select between infill mesh only or cutting mesh that is another simple addition. In preview mode with line type selected support material will render with transparency so you can easily see what's being supported. Now we can go and actually demonstrate this. Let's make our ball a little bit bigger. And if I can figure out how to click a mouse, let's try 500. Not enough support. Let's try 2000. Too big. I think that'll do. Nope, still too big. Okay. There we go. That way we can see the support down there. So we'll slice this real quick. And let's get this out of the way for now since we're not using it. And we're almost done slicing here. When it does, we're going to go over to preview mode. Oh, you know what? Actually, I don't think I turned support on. We're going to have to slice this again. Hang on just one second here.
Yep, hang on just a second. All right, and that should be proper. We'll let it finish processing. Once again, we will get this out of the way here. And I actually increased, or excuse me, decreased the overhang angle that it recommends support for, so it should give us a lot more support. So basically what it's saying is that with line type selected, you can kind of see, look, you get a better angle on this here. And you can see under there, there we go. You can see that it is kind of transparent so you can see the ball through there. That is the new addition. That is what, what has happened. So yeah, you can still see your support lines and what is being grown up there, but you can also see the model behind it so you can actually see what is being supported. And that is a great addition as well. So let's go back to our what's new section and see what else they have in here. Uh, transparent, support, transparent support rendering, that's what we were just looking at. So no stair stepping for PVA profiles. Uh, it's intended to reduce adhesion between support and the model. Um, that's interesting. That's one that we're going to come back to uh, because they don't really use PVA much, but we'll check that out as well in another video. Uh, separators in the extension menu. So this is another one by Field of View. Contributed a method for plugin authors to add separators between menu items in the extension submenu. So that is if I click up here. Um, you can add divisions into these. Um, I don't have any that have it, but if you have any that are installed that have separate options or um, separate components to them, those are now separated into individual items uh, as well. So let's see what else is in here. A uh, couple other decent ones. Uh, Ultimaker account sign in prompt, that's new. Add a clear text to the sign in prompt. Um, you know it is nice to sign in and be logged in I'm not signed in at the moment but that's how you get access to that marketplace and download the extensions so it's definitely worth doing uh, and then they have a couple more so infill mesh ordering this is basically so if you have overlapping models you can determine which one gets printed first or which order to print the meshes in which is nice uh, it says they put a hard limit on backup file size in this release to prevent other files from being stored there not sure what that's about. They must have had some sort of problem or they wouldn't be doing that. Uh, and then 3MF G code comments were removed. So they fixed a bug where comments were removed from start and end G code when opening from a 3MF. Couple other little things here. They added some flying bear printers and magic firm printers and the stepper motor disarming during pause at height. Uh, some printers have a very heavy build platform. So when the pause at height script was enabled, it would disarm the Z stepper which means the weight of the platform would basically just drop the platform or you would lose your place on the print. This basically locks the stepper on and keeps it in place, which is kind of ideal for pausing a print and not losing your print entirely. So the one that we did skip over here was print monitor preheat fields. Values of the print monitor preheat fields were broken in previous versions and they've now been fixed also by field of view. So. Uh, there you have it. That's the gist of the rundown of what's new in Kira 4.6. I've been playing around again with the beta since the beta was released, and I really haven't had any issues. I've really enjoyed playing with it so far. Uh, we're going to go ahead and close it up now. And that's going to be it, guys. Like I said, don't forget to check out that Kira settings in 5 minute or less video. I'll put it up right here. There is a whole playlist, over 30 items so far. We will continue to keep adding to them as Kira adds settings and going over them one by one. Now, those videos should be fairly educational and get you caught up to speed on everything you need to know about Kira, but if it doesn't quite do the job for you, I do have a couple other videos around that are Kira specific tutorials specific to particular versions that I have used in the past. So feel free to check those out as well. They're somewhere around here on the page and if you want to get to them, you'll just have to check out our main channel page and hit that subscribe button. As always, this channel is brought to you by these fine Patreon supporters. If you'd like to support the channel on Patreon, head over to www.patreon.com slash technivorous. That's going to be it for this video. As always, I am Technivorous, and thanks for watching. Don't forget to check out our main channel page where we do a free giveaway for our subscribers every month. So far, we've given away things like a Capricorn PTFE tubing kit and spools of filament. So the giveaway videos are always pinned to our main channel page. 
So all you have to do is subscribe and leave a comment on the giveaway video for the current contest. Feel free to check out this video right here. YouTube picked it for my content just for you. And if you haven't already, you can hit the subscribe button right here. So what are you waiting for? Become a Technivore now. Thanks again. Technivorous out.